Aaron, after a long spring and answering a lot of questions yesterday, how anxious are you to just get the 2019 season started today? Yeah, really excited. Um, you know, <clears throat> a lot goes into this day, obviously. Um, you know, off-season preparations, long spring training days, um, and now we get to go start to find out. And uh, so it's an exciting time, an exciting day, and, and all that comes with this day. And, um, you know, feel like we're very much ready to go. Kenny. Aaron Uniform has the armband in memory of uh, Mel Stottlemyre. How well did you get to know Mel? I know you intersected yeah. for a few months, and, and what does it mean to you to, to tribute him in that way? Yeah, um, I think it's awesome. And, and, and you know, just being in the clubhouse this morning at breakfast and kind of had his accomplishments up on our board so the guys were talking about it and looking at all his complete games and everyone's like, whoa. Um, <clears throat> and just, you know, I had probably the similar experience to a lot of you that have covered him and uh, just a really great guy. And, you know, obviously when I came here, he's the pitching coach and <clears throat> someone that just embraced you right away, made you feel part of the team, made you feel part of the family. Um, so it'll, it'll be an honor to wear um, that in his memory. Who else? Jack. I have a feeling this will be the first of many lineup questions throughout the year, but why um, why did you assemble your lineup the way you did today? I'm thinking principally two through six. You could have had Bird to maybe split up some of the yeah. righties. I'm wondering why you went that route. Yeah, I considered um, once I made the decision to go with, with Bird, um, <clears throat> I, I did consider kind of anywhere in that fifth to seventh range, um, but just felt like this is the way I wanted to go. Um, you know, we obviously aren't ideal in that we have the perfect balance of right and left. So anywhere you put him, um, he's splitting up some. So um, I just feel like I've liked the look of Miggy and where he's been all, all spring, mostly hitting him in that five spot when we've had all our guys. I like Gary there six, and then, um, then felt like it was a good time there to split up Bird. So... There could be times when, when he moves into a different spot, but um, basically my decision was settling on anywhere from five to seven, and and that's how I came up with it. Coley, back right. Actually, piggybacking off of that, excuse me, piggybacking off of that, uh, you've got uh, Glaber eighth, uh, Tulo ninth. Uh, of course, Glaber was mm -hmm. ninth a lot last year. Just what went into that? Yeah. Um, Obviously, Glaber was so dynamic for us in that nine hole, and and could envision him being there. But I feel like, I feel like our guys, by and large, are in in a really good place right now. Um, so it's a matter of just splitting guys up. Glaber's a guy that um, I could envision hitting in a lot of spots this year. You know, probably, <laughs> you know, anywhere from first to nine. Frankly, I mean, so. <clears throat> settling in on him in that eight spot, you know, I feel like he handles lefty. So if you got into a lefty situation where they wanted to face bird and, and, and Glaber coming in right behind them, I like that. But, um, but it's one of those that I, I could have put him ninth too, because I do like him in that slot, but I feel like we're in a lot of ways, maybe a little bit deeper this year. John in the middle on the right. Obviously, last year was a lot, bit of a lost year for Gary. What are you seeing as you start off this year that you weren't seeing last year? What's different to you? Uh, health, uh, first and foremost. And, and not that at the start of the season he wasn't healthy, but I think there, he's he's at a different level physically um, and where he came in, everything from conditioning to just healthier body parts. I feel like he's a more flexible. Um, <clears throat> I feel like there's his intent is really good. Um I feel like being a player that's as talented as Gary is, um, when you go through some bumps and you go through some adversity as a young player in this game, um, it's not the end of the world. It's it's a chance for growth. And I, I really feel like he's grown so much having gone through what he did last year. 
and actually finishing the season in what I thought was a really good place, having impactful quality at bats, catching well, um, and then going into the off season with a mindset that I want to be really great at this game, and and, and that encompasses everything that you know as a catcher there's so much that goes into that obviously behind the scenes and I feel like he's done the work he's ready to go and um, I'm really excited about where he's at right now Tyler in the middle if you could just pass it over hey Aaron um, obviously you had a great season last year and you got a full schedule ahead but how much is it on your mind or are you guys conscious of the fact that it's been 10 years now since this team's been to the World Series. It's, we're a long way from that, I know, but that's how things are measured around here. How much do you think about that? Yeah, not a lot. I think of it in terms of one of the reasons you sign up to do this is you want to win a championship. And I think everyone in our room has that expectation and I think rightfully has that expectation because I think we were one of the teams that – has the potential to do that. So, um, but we're a long way between now and then. So as much as, you know, that's the intent, you know, we kind of also get lost in the day and lost into the grind of things that start right now where we got to take care of the next pitch. And uh, that's what I want our focus to be. And, uh, you know, I've said the the one thing I have said about this group and, and a lot of these guys now having been through the last couple of seasons where they've had a lot of success but, you know, ended in a disappointing way, I do think that's added to the hunger and, and you know, I do like the intent and the hunger that these guys I feel like are showing day in and day out right now. Clap against the wall to the right. Aaron, can you talk about um, Torres and Andrew Horner? They've set the bar pretty high, both of them, and the challenges ahead. Now, they're not going to be able to take anyone by surprise. Yeah. Um, obviously, really talented young players that had massively successful seasons in their rookie campaigns. Um, with both guys, <clears throat> I think they went out and had a great winner as far as getting their body ready to go, working on different things that they both wanted to work on to improve themselves. I feel like they're both driven. I feel like they've both had really good springs and are ready for this. You know, the, the one message that I would have for them is <clears throat> don't feel like you got to go out do, you know. These guys are driven enough. They want to be great at this game, but – my message to them is go be really good at your craft and, and, the, and the results will take care of itself if you're continuing to, to work on your game and work on your craft because of the talent that they have. But don't feel like you got to go out and, and, and go one up last year. You know, it's a hard game and, and go get better at your game. And, and for those two players, the results will follow. A couple more if there are any. Uh, Jack. <laughs> Aaron, in a lineup that has a former MVP in Stanton, Judge 50-plus homers, Sanchez 30-plus, and Duhar finished second in the Rookie of the Year, your cleanup hitter is a guy who spent the beginning of last season at AAA. What is the message in there about the Luke Voigt story and, and the ascension that he has had? I, I think it's just our belief in, in who he is. You know, uh, Go back to you know, when we kind of targeted him, targeted him as an organization that we felt like this was – in a lot of ways, an undervalued player. Um, and then once he did get his opportunity here, he, he took full advantage, like a lot of our guys have. You know, I, he kind of kicked the door in and took it. And uh, he's another guy that's worked really hard this winter to work on, on his game. And I think what he does so well is, um, and why I like him in that spot in the middle of our order, is he controls the strike zone and hits the ball with authority in the air, especially the ability to drive it the other way in this ballpark. So um, it's just my opinion, our opinion of, you know, what we think he is as a, as a, as a consistent hitter. Uh, to the left, Nate. <clears throat> Aaron, the uh, 
the patch on the other sleeve commemorating 150 years of Major League Baseball. And I feel like your family's probably been involved with uh, half of those seasons, at least. Uh, just <laughs> yeah. what does it mean to kind of keep that lineage alive and, and be part of this uh, institution of Major League Baseball? State? Yeah, you know what? I, I don't take it lightly to put on a Major League uniform and, and be a part of opening day, um, especially to do it in pinstripes and such an iconic uniform for such an iconic franchise. Um, you know, one of the things that, you know, I even relay to my players is today's a celebration of our sport. And I really believe that. And, uh, since I was a little kid, opening day has always meant a lot to me. It's something that I cherish, respect, honor, even going back to my little league opening day. So, um, it's a big deal, and, and I hope guys get a chance to um, appreciate and soak it in a little bit. Take a last one to the right here. Even going back to his days in Japan, Tanaka seems to be a guy who's always embraced the big stage, and there's a different element to opening day. So is there almost an extra sense of comfort handing the ball to a guy like him commemorating a new season? Um, yeah, Moss is certainly cut out for this um you know he's he's such a perfectionist at at his craft and i've talked to you guys before you know he's one of those guys i just love to watch him work at his craft you know you go watch him in a bullpen and that the intent and the focus and the precision that he has um yeah i mean always great comfort when i hand the ball to Massa and um excited that he's gonna kick things off for us today